uh, Egypt, how Egypt is, is coping, you know, with um, um, digital economy, digital, you know, technology, and uh, um, it, it, this is the, you know, main focal point of our discussion today, I, I think. And uh, also, I have, you know, just two points in mind, you know, where is the Egypt strength? And my answer is, it's middleness, you know, middle class, it's thick middle class, and uh, it's, uh, you know, youth. So youth is not, uh, usually Egyptian youth is, you know, um, recognized as part of the main problem, but actually Egyptian youth, and there are, the quality are education quality varies, very varies, but um, the, they are very strong and vibrant. So it poses some, you know, problems sometimes, but it will be eventually the, the resource, um, ultimate resource for the country and for the region. So um, today I uh, invite um, young journalist uh, in the documentary producer uh, who is now working in the, one of the very vibrant uh, media company in Egypt. So Mr. Ahmed El Dereini, um, would, you, would you give us your presentation? Okay, good morning for everyone and good afternoon for uh, others in other uh, cities around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm Ahmed al -Drini. I'm an Egyptian journalist, TV presenter, and the head of documentary unit at DMC, the largest Egyptian cable network. This is my first time to give a lecture in English, uh, in English language. Therefore, please forgive me if my ideas were not clear enough or my performance didn't match your expectations. I'll be talking today about the challenges that face my generation in the Arab media from my perspective. All the challenges, in my opinion, are related to the Arab Spring and what it brought to the whole region. The first challenge has to do with key definitions, such as who is our enemy. My generation is experiencing a new enemy to the nation. Let me elaborate. In the past, particularly in my father's and grandfather's generation, they had a main known enemy. For example, they entered three wars against Israel. There was some diplomatic tension with some Western countries. But for my generation, the definition of the word enemy became different. After the Arab Spring, many countries in the region, and my country is one of them, fought against the political Islam groups or extremists, and the countries are supporting them as Turkey and Qatar. During these fights or wars, certain kinds of questions appeared in the public sphere, such as who is actually our enemy? Why does each side have their own national narrative and methods? What do we actually want from tomorrow? This chaos of definitions, concepts, and understandings in the first challenge that faced me as a TV presenter. These questions, the questions of who are you? Who are we as a nation? All these unanswered questions and doubts represents challenges when you try to approach the current affair. How to understand what is going around you? What is your point of view? how to be professional and impartial. Millions of Egyptians, myself included, have doubts about the main political players in the scene. Inside Egypt and, sorry, <clears throat> inside Egypt and outside. All we want is to protect our country. And everyone is exploring his own way after witnessing two revolutions in Egypt with all the mess and chaos associated with both of them. How do my work as TV presenter and the columnist amid all these polarizations in the public sphere and amid the absence of a fully credibility institution that has the ability to unify the nation? While, one, while no one or institution has 
the full credibility or even ability to unify the nation. I'm not talking about the uh, new Messiah whom we will follow toward the good and justice and noble principles. I'm not talking about a leader, person, a person or a governmental body or a political party. I mean this public idea or dream or direction the nation decide to abide with. I'm not talking specifically about who are the enemies of my country. All of these are just tumbles of the uncertainty towards many things. Me and millions of, of, of the nation have doubts about what is going on. This is part of awkwardness and redefinition of values after witnessing two revolution. Obviously, I'm not talking about certain enemy or opponent and not searching for one. <laughs> I'm not searching for an enemy to define. I'm just trying to explore who am I? The nations must probably define itself by its achievements or its enemies. What I mean here is the principle of redefining concepts itself. My generation is, is trying to find new answers for all the questions. All of these make you as a journalist awkward when you try to approach the current affair, how to understand, how to tackle, what to say to people, how to build your opinion, how to tell people this is the truth or this is my analyze for what is going on. The second challenge face me is post-truth era. We are living under heavy flow of information. Everyone chooses from bombarding news and posts on social media. Some are fake news. What enhance their previous concepts, not what make them breach the truth. The social media produced a world where everyone has his own version of truth about the world and about his country and his very little own word in the village or even the company he or she works on. Social media made it, to make it, made it harder to people working in media to differentiate about what is real and what is fake. In Egypt, we have an addition problem, which is the electronic committees that aim to create an impression of widespread grassroots support for individual or policies or even attacking them. They are professional hired internet users who have access to 100,000 of fake accounts and they have agreements with some influencers who have remarkable impact in shaping public opinion. Electronic committees are being hired by main political powers to their opponents or their opponents to hijack the social media trends or create one or even fake them. Electronic committees can set the timeline, choose the topics that will invade your account from everywhere and tackle these topics the way they want you to believe is the truth or the justice or the goat. Each player has his own agenda and own definitions and own values, regardless the topic is political or religious or social. How to seek truth in such environment and environment? How to be balanced in your coverage as a professional? How to adopt the professional tools when you deal with such a confusing and artificial world? The powers that control media after two revolutions in region are meant with setting the agenda that comes with their own version of truth or even their version of nationalism. I mean with the powers governments, non-state actors, businessmen, political leaders. You are trying to be balanced, professional, and abiding the, nation, the national interest, while each power in the scene has their way to define what is national interest and how should balance and the professionalism serve the nation interest, the national interest, not the opposite. I'm trying to be a part of I'm trying not to be a part of this mess, examining the tools, ethics, and the traditions of media industry that guarantee providing the audience with the truth and guaranteeing my integrity. 
The third challenge, this, the, the third challenge facing my generation is the fluidity. As a TV presenter in a new world where many things are going to be different compared with the last two decades, I face my generation third challenge. What is fluidity? Fluidity is when you're not being able to describe the truth, to know the truth. We face foggy environment in news and social media makes us can't realize what is good and what is bad. And as we did before, before we can know what is good and what is bad. These challenges might seem as social or political symptoms after revolutions and wars. This is true. But when you try to tackle the impact of symptoms, you might appear as a doctor who wastes, wastes the patient time studying the illness and ignoring prescribing a medicine or finding a cure. Although all the challenges I mentioned now, I'm very optimistic about the future and sure that the empire will strike back because of the awareness of the questions and many, and that the truth has many sides. We didn't obey to any of them. We are explore, exploring the truth, realizing that the nation is in a need for really warriors for truth, not repeaters of political opponents narrative. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, I'm done. Thank you very much, Ahmed, um, for your, you know, uh, how can I say, it's a very grave, you know, your, your note, uh, tone uh, of your presentation speech is very, you know, grave, you know. Um, I really uh, sincerely um, um, accept it, you know. Um, now you have mentioned three very, very important challenge is Egypt, Egyptian society and particularly Egyptian youth are faced with and um, those are very important. Um, and, and as a media personality, you, um, you're very brave to address us um, on, on these issues. And uh, I really, really um, thank you uh, for, for, for that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, um, we, I think we have, you know, very important three uh, topics today, and they are separate, uh, even though they are interrelated. So, um, may, may I uh, ask um, you very briefly uh, from the, the floor uh, the, the question, you know, after this representation, we make, you know, discussion and also uh, uh, within the, uh, during the discussion, um, questions are taken for three presentations, but uh, if someone has specific question on, on media and uh, uh, Egyptian media, uh, uh, particularly, uh, um, would you raise your hand um, if someone want to, you know, of, uh, oh, no, uh, of our audience, uh, no, no, from the audience, uh, I want to ask if we have any questions are uh, particularly on the Egyptian media. Uh, would you raise your, you know, blue hand or, 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 or on Zoom or, or application? Is there any questions? Um, it, it's a very rare opportunity to ask the the new generation of Egyptian media to and uh, media in the middle um, mid, uh, in Egypt has been very very influential and still it's influential uh, even though nowadays we have um, too much attention you know uh, on, on Gulf media and, and really in, in the Gulf there have been a rise of and the concentration of new media industry but I, I think Egypt still keeps its position of the you know, very deep resource uh, uh, for the, the resource for, for the development, development of media, uh, not only in, in the Nile Valley, but uh, uh, in the entire Middle East. So, um, so yeah, you have, you know, Ahmed, you, you have mentioned, uh, you know, 
of course, the entire presentation about your exploration of the situation right after the Arab Spring. And, uh, um, you know, um, for the young generation, young generation, the professionals like you, uh, the, uh, the 10 years after Arab Spring, well, uh, you know, what, what is your uh, present assessment of the Arab Spring? You know, it's 10 years, so it's a uh, generational change is going on and uh, Arab Spring is associated with so-called youth, youth at the time, but now after 10 years, um, the youth who participated in the Arab Spring uh, and you know, the, uh, and the uh, political change after that. Uh, how do you, you know, assess the past ten years, uh, Ahmed? If you have further, you know, comments on that, um, it, it would be very appreciated. Uh, after one decade, mm -hmm. after the Arab Spring. <sighs> you have many generations in Egypt. Each generation has uh, its own problem and its own benefit from the Arab Spring. The younger generation in Egypt, I think, I claim, uh, is very different from us, uh, who uh, we are the, the generation where in the squares shouting against re regimes uh, and have our own uh, narrative uh, toward the world. What is good, what is bad, what is uh, what we want from our country. Uh, there are there is a generation, a new generation, have a new dream, and they are considering us uh, something from the past. Although we are uh, the generation uh, excluded the previous generations and said they are uh, the cause of uh, a broken country. We now we are uh, part of. Uh, part of uh, this uh, new world. Uh, the, the, the younger generation uh, is furious from us. Uh, but the future, I think, uh, will be managed by, uh, by new awareness, new awareness of uh, the, global, uh, the global citizen, the coming global citizen who, have, uh, who has interest in what is going on Japan and what is in the United States and what is in Europe, what is Clubhouse, what is Facebook, what is democracy, what is good, what is bad. Uh, you have uh, a new era of uh, global awareness. Uh, I think uh, this will affect politically the point of view of the coming generation in Egypt. Me and the previous generations now are old fashioned. Hmm, interesting. Um, but uh, this global, you know, uh, sphere, you know, you, um, as you mentioned, as you mentioned, as a challenge, um, there are full of, you know, fake news and full of fluidity. Um, so, do you think, you know, new generation of Egypt are, you know, you, uh, oh, you know, uh, new, the new generation is more, you know, uh, good, you know, good at of grappling with the, this new uh, situation, like, you know, full of, of fake, fake news and uh, full of, of uncertainty and fluidity. Uh, do, do you think they are equipped? The coming generation oh. is part of what is happening in the world. Uh, all, uh, all the coming generation uh, is familiar with what is happening. We are old mammoth, old mammoth, who witnessed the world with just one or two channels in the TV, and we were read, we were, uh, we have been reading uh, the same newspapers. We are, we have a nostalgia for a world, for an old world where truth were very clear. But the new generation, I think, they are a part of uh, this dilemma around the world. This generation in Russia, Europe, Africa, uh, Latin America, Asia have the same problem. And this is the world toward them. But I have experience, an experience with another world, with another world which, where we had the main two narratives, even if the Russian narrative and the American narrative. 
uh, we in, uh, each country has uh, somehow a big narrative about who are we, who is our enemies, uh, who are our enemies, and what is good and what is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the chaos is, uh, is a feature of their life now. Mm. I think they don't suffer like us. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much for your assessment of the present situation.